So much to talk about. And by the way, we did pick up a possible offside on the Granite Xhaka goal, which we'll show you in the highlights. But first, Tim, your reaction to both sides of the coin after that game. Well, with Manchester United, it's almost... It feels disrespectful to say that they look disinterested. Um, but I'm reading body language. I, um, I, it, over the course of 90 minutes, there's always going to be moments where you have to stick together, where you have to have camaraderie, where you have to have the togetherness. I don't see it from this Manchester United team in moments where you have to hunt in packs and defend in pairs. They're just not doing it. Um, and look, I, I think they've made a huge mistake. Yes, I, it, Ralph Radnick was interim interim, but there was still a job to do. There was still a job to get top four this season. Whoever your manager was going to be for next season, set yourself up for the future for next season. And they haven't done that. It's been a massive failure. It's, it's a huge disappointment from Ralph Ragnick, isn't it? Yeah, he hasn't done the, he hasn't done the job. It's been disappointing. And uh, the whole idea of this interim interim with him hasn't worked. Mm. It's a sad reflection of the football club United are right now. Mm. I don't think I've ever seen Manchester United looking so low. I mm -hmm. think Lee said a couple, a couple of times in commentary, a shell of a club. I mean, it just looks like it's broken and they're waiting for this new guy. They've got to wait for next season. I mean, they had a, a decent chance, yeah. a good chance of a top four finish. That's all gone now. But just the way that they play and the defend, defending and, and stuff that you talked about, Tim, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, it's ugh, ugly right now. Well, let's talk Arsenal because it's funny. What a funny team. They can lose to Palace and Southampton and Brighton. Then they can beat Chelsea and mm. Manchester United. Yeah, not perfect today. They give it a lot of chances. But they're getting the job done. And it's a totally, totally different environment, totally different managers, totally different feel, the connection with the team and the, and the fans you saw it there. They're, they're, they're clapping, they're walking around the stadium and stuff. So well done for Arteta. That's a big win. We're, United is always a story, but that's a big win for Arsenal with this top four race. Yeah, Rebecca, you say it there, but then they beat Chelsea and Man United. And all that is is youth. Yeah. And, and you're going to have to... Everybody is accepted at the football club that this is what it's going to look like for a little bit. But I tell you what, they are well on their way. Well, Very good just, football team. Yeah, indeed. If you're just joining us this morning, just waking up, you've missed quite the game. Plenty went on, Tim. Started off after just three minutes. Nuno Tavares putting the Gunners one up. Yeah, and, and, and poor defending here from United. Saka with a really good strike. Good save from De Gea. And you just watch Moran here and tell us both missed the ball. And when De Gea makes a save, it falls. There to Tavares. Just taps it in. It's really, really easy to make it 1-0. But then United try and get themselves back. In the game, 24th minute, Dalo here. Lovely strike, beats Ramsdale, but hits the bar, carries off the bar and stays out. And then just watch here with Odegaard, just lovely little back heel there to Enketia, who should be fine in the corner. Forces a good save from De Gea, but Arteta realizes what a good chance that is. And the socket involved again, just follows his pass. As he tells us, with the foul there, it falls to Enketia, who's offside. And but there was a penalty. Referee Craig Paulson goes over to the VAR. Television has a look at it, and what he sees is it's not really, for me, a coming together. It's more of a barge in the back. Number 27 here, Tellez on soccer. For me, it's an, e it's an easy penalty. I think the referee and VAR see it that way. He awards him the penalty. Yeah, so he wins a penalty, scores at the Liberty Mutual Man of the Match. Yeah, steps up and really coolly slots at home there. It looks easy for him at the moment. 2-0 to Arsenal. And they thought they were comfortable. Then you just watch Ronaldo always in and around the goal. Sancho does a great job here. Just finding a way to hold on to it. Matt just spins it in. Credit Ronaldo. Great movement. He loses Gabriel. Just gets on the back side of him. Gabriel can't find him, and it's a tough finish. I'll tell you what, on the half volley, making it 2-1, giving him a chance going half. Time. Yeah, 2-1 for Arsenal at this point. Classic uh, penalty here, absolute stone wall, Robbie. Yeah, when your arm's that far above your head, the ball strikes it. It's automatic, actually, and the referee is all over that. And you see Tavares here, his arm is in a very unexpected position, really. He strikes it. And what a bad day it was for Bruno Fernandes, wasn't it, today? I mean, you know, when you've got Ronaldo on the field to play, Rebecca, that's taken many and scored them zillions of penalty kicks. It's still Bruno Fernandes who takes it and misses. And, of course, a big reaction from uh, Ramsdale as well. Three minutes later, United thought they're back on level terms. Yeah, they did. And the ball just... I mean, it's just a good finish of Ronaldo. I mean, any time it goes to him, but he's just fractionally offside. It's not a great angle, by the way, to try and conclude from here, but that's where you got to... They have to do that, and it's just a, a few inches offside Ronaldo. But, again, just admire the technique and the, the focus and concentration from this guy. Three minutes later, Aaron Ramsdale. Yeah, it's a brilliant save. And Ronaldo here, clever. 
just on the outside there. The weight is perfect. That's a quick hand from Ramsdale there to get his arm up there. He's got to react very quickly. This is slow motion. He still throws that hand up very quickly there and deflected onto the post. Great save. So it's a lovely goal from Granit Xhaka to make it three. Well, talk, mm. talk us through, first of all, the goal. Well, it's a brilliant strike and, uh, you know, a little back lift. Good power, good, like, direction into the corner. But is there an offside in there? Um, fair play to Arsenal and, and Granit Xhaka. And, and is this in the light of the, in this light of sight of the goalkeeper? And there's Enketia there. He's definitely an offside position. You can see that. And De Gea, as we're going to see from replays, has to look around the Arsenal for there. I mean, for me, that's in the line of sight. Lindelof there as well. But but Enketia is the nearest player. And the, we did speak to the Pedro Mal Rebecca, mm. and they said that Lindelof is in his line as well. So and the De Gea, distance between and the, De, yeah. De Gea and Enketia was enough for him not to be a distraction. Yeah, that's what they said, and uh, you know I, I'm surprised that you see a reaction here. Tim from David De Gea, who was really not happy about it. Well, he's got every right to be upset because the fact of the matter is Enketia is offside, and, and and I think it's a poor decision because Lindelof, as a goalkeeper, you know Lindelof here is, is is taking away the right hand side ish of the goal, so you're not actually going to look around your defender. You're going to allow him to protect that right hand side, and you're just going to go left. But at the moment, because Enketia is there, he has to look around Enketia. So the distance for me isn't a safe distance, as as the explanation says. Enketia is in an offside position. David De Gea has to look around him. If it's just Lindelof, he would look around his defender. So poor decision. And then with uh, about 14 minutes to play, was Bruno a little lucky here, Rob? I think he's very lucky. Don't like this at all. The amount of time that the ball is away from the player here, there, it's almost like he knows what he's doing. I think it's dangerous and safety of an opponent. The, the, the reason he gets away with it is because the contact is low, and that's one of the, the boxes they have to tick, you know, high. If that's, if that's a few inches higher up, that's going to be a straight red. Yeah, poor day again for Manchester United. Right, the race then for the top four. Arsenal in prime position in fourth. This is who they've got, including the North London derby, May 12th. Tottenham have got Brentford later today, then five games, including Leicester, Liverpool and the North London derby, maybe the hardest run in. And Manchester United with just four games left. They've got Chelsea, Brentford, Brighton, and then they go to Palace on May the 22nd. Arsenal very much at the moment in prime position, but Tottenham do have that game in hand, which is a little bit later on NBC at 12.30. Let's take you back then to our three-man booth, to Arlo, Lee and Graham after whew, quite the morning, chaps. <laughs> yes, indeed. Nice early start for us. Um, the beaming smiles and all the supporters behind the camera suggest that Arsenal fans are in fine fettle. Are you surprised at, at this recovery when it seemed like they were slipping out of the top four race? No, because I think that's what we've said before the game. That's what you get from this type of side. He's trying to build something with younger players. You're going to get ups and downs, bumps in the road, all of that lot different performances each week and it's difficult for Arteta trying to manage all of that because it's his first job as well he's getting used to playing different styles at times they've got different formations trying to get I mean he's frantic down there on the sideline I mean he, he would drive me mad if I was playing for him but I'm it's been a while since I was under 23, so we'll leave that one. But I think the way that he's he's putting the team together, he knows, you know, I spoke to him the other week and he, he says, I know I'm going to get ups and downs. Mm. And he's happy to do that. He's happy for him to play out the bat and the style is... And the fans, the, the biggest thing is the fans are bought into it. Mm. So they are up disappointed when they went on those three defeats, but they bounced back with two wins. And now they look as if... But, you, you would not say, right, they're guaranteed fourth place because there could be another cu couple of bumps. Mm. I think talent, unity and identity that they've got, and you contrast that with Manchester United, they've got the talent, they've got no identity and absolutely zero mm. unity. And you saw it come together for them a bit in the beginning of the second half and, you know, Man United fans will say, yeah, but we missed a penalty, we had a couple of good chances and... That would have got them off the hook. The fundamentals are appalling, um, and there's a huge amount of work to do. Yeah. Anything left to say about Manchester United that hasn't been said? No. It, it, what's written on the tin, you're seeing it in front of your own mm. eyes. There's a huge amount of bringing together the whole club from the top right down to the kit, man. Yep, Eric Ten Hag, I'm sure he would have been watching somewhere. Uh, Rebecca, he takes over in the summer for Graham and I. It's a Merseyside derby tomorrow, so we'll talk to you from Anfield. Look forward to it, chaps. Thank you very much indeed. So Arsenal are back into fourth spot. Might they be in the Champions League for the first time in six years? Yeah, that's a big victory, isn't it? A precious three points. What do you make of the performance? 
a big performance and a game that I think he had everything. He had uh, moments where we showed real quality with a threat. We scored two goals, created chances, a game where we had to suffer, a game where at moments we were a bit lost and lacking energy and and they were on top, a game where we were really fishing in the boxes, a game where we had luck when we needed luck, which is really important in this game. Uh, but overall, extremely happy. It was a, a massive game for us and uh, really enjoying it. Yeah, it could have gone either way. That granite Xhaka goal went in. That kind of ended the argument. It's a fantastic mm -hmm. strike, wasn't it? Yeah, if, if you have to write the story of the game and say that granite is going to score from there, probably you don't do it. But that's the beauty of, of this game. Um, it's always tough. They have some exceptional players. Um, you are always like this. Every time they have the ball in the final third, something can happen. And... Uh, so happy to win again. And it's, that was Granit's first goal of the season. Tavares, of course, that was his first Arsenal goal at all. That's the benefit of pushing forward your fullback. It is, and the way he played as well. And then he had a, a few difficulties in the second half, and we helped him win, when we changed shape. And um, they are really young. You can sense it at some stage in games that uh, that we have to make other decisions. We are trying just to will to play and, and run forward. And um, well, overall, really the, happy. The second goal was a complicated affair. Ketia was offside. VAR comes in. The ref looks at the screen. You were pretty close to the screen. You mm. no doubt in that decision then. No doubt. Well, I thought if it's, if it's not a goal, then it's a penalty. Um, the play as well to get from the back the way we played. And it was a shame that it didn't end up in goal. But uh, Bukayo again showed uh, a real composure to score the goal. Absolutely. Uh, give us an update because he came off a little bit of a concern there. Yeah, we had four or five players really with difficulties to start the match. Uh, he was one of them, Ben was another one. We had Granite with an issue in his eye as well. Eddie that hasn't played any minutes and three days later or two and a half days later he needs to play. The boys are doing everything they can to be on that field and uh, I feel lucky. And it's been a good week. Chelsea, Manchester United, advantage Arsenal. This is what we wanted, and uh, we know that I said this is going to be a roller coaster. The fact that you win or lose in this league are for a small margins, and uh, today things went in, in our favour, and we are really happy with that. What do you think would Eric Ten Hag be thinking watching that game? Is, is he, does he see a coherent team, or does he see a lot of work? Well, there is a lot of work for sure. We knew that even before that game, but uh, we also showed what kind of football we can play. And uh, although we had to 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 deal with that with those two early goals, we still we still showed the attitude. So there is nothing about the attitude of the players that we should fault today. Top four gone now. Yeah, pretty sure. So for me, even before that game, that was not very likely. But after today's result, uh, the top four is gone. Yes. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.